hello and welcome. I'm Amy Richardson. I'm uh, at UK Healthcare and I am a staff development specialist who works with the Serious Communicable Disease Task Force. And uh, we're here with our team. This is Miss Sydney. Hi, I'm Sydney Sims. I'm also with staff development, um, part of the Serious Communicable Disease Task Force as well. And this is Joshua Dameron. I'm Josh Dameron. I'm with the Serious Communicable Disease Task Force. I've been with them about three and a half years. So today we're going to go through donning and doffing with you and show you a little bit of tips and tricks on how to keep yourself safe and prevent the spread of COVID-19 or any other uh, serious transmittable disease within the community. All right, so um, in order to start the donning process, we're going to make sure that Josh has everything out of his pockets. So he's going to get rid of badges, lanyards, cell phones, anything that would cause him to one, reach in uh, his pockets while he's in an um, isolation room, or two, that may pose a threat to breaking his PPE. So um, now that Josh has taken all of his items off, he's going to thoroughly wash with soap and water um, his hands from the elbow down. sure that Josh doesn't have any um, watches, bracelets, bands, rings on. You want to be bare from the elbow down. Uh, that way we do not inadvertently uh, hold on to the virus. We want to make sure that everything gets clean thoroughly. So after he's washed his hands and performed hand hygiene, then we can start the donning process. So the first thing he's going to do is uh, put on his N95 face mask. I store my N95 in a good breathable bag. Don't store anything plastic as I can hold them apart from the corners. So this is my N95. Before I place it on, I want to do a couple things. I want to do a good elastic check and make sure my elastic's holding up. If I'm reusing my N95, I want to make sure it's not soiled or warped in any way. I don't have any tears on it, thing like that. I'm going to place it in the palm of my hand with my hands through, through the loop. I'm going to place it against my face. I'm going to pull my top strap over the back of my head and resting on the crown of my head. And my bottom strap is going to go on the back of my neck, right there. I'm going to mold it to the bridge of my nose. I'm going to make sure it fits good and snug, and that way I get a good seal. If air can get out, air can get in. We want to make sure it's fitting good. So you want to make sure when you're molding it, do not pinch the bridge of the nose. So you want to make sure you mold with your fingers instead of pinching across the bridge. So once he's uh, molded his nose piece, he's going to check for a seal. I'm going to take a big deep breath in and a big hot breath out. And as I'm breathing out, I want to feel around the edges of my N95. And try to see if I feel any kind of air leaking around the edge. I don't want any air leaking through the edge. I only want air coming through the front when my filtration is so CDC recommends that if you have a beard, that it's less than a quarter of an inch. So um, for those of you who have longer beards, you want to make sure that it's trimmed down less than a quarter of an inch or clean shave uh, to use the N95. So then Josh is going to cover his N95 with a yellow or a standard mask. What this is going to do is allow his N95 to remain clean while he's inside the room, protect it from any debris. Uh, and that way he can store it to reuse it again if necessary. So he's gonna do the same thing and mold down the nose piece across the bridge of his nose. Uh, Josh will be wearing safety glasses as part of, of the contact airborne with eye protection for the COVID-19 patient. So he wants to make sure he gets a good bridge, uh, a seal on the bridge of his nose so they don't fog up those safety glasses. All right, Josh, after you got your respiratory gear on, we're going to put on your protective gown. So we're utilizing a blue standard isolation gown, which is made of plastic. And uh, you can also use an OR gown if uh, you don't have these gowns available. If you're using an OR gown, it needs to be an Amy 3 level or greater. So when I tie my gown, I want to make sure I tie it in the back. If I, uh, if I can tie it around front, sometimes it can complicate doffing the gown properly. 
So I just want to make sure I tie it good and tight in the back. And if I have somebody to help me out, they can double check for me. So anything check. You're good. All right, so once we have our standard gown on, then we can move on to our gloves. We're going to use one pair of gloves. That's going to be uh, gloves that are over top of our gown sleeves. It's only required to use one pair of gloves while you're in these rooms. Um, however, we're gonna treat those like our, our skin, an extension of our skin. So once he enters the room, if there's a skill that he would normally perform in a room where he would uh, don gloves, he's gonna go ahead and don a second pair of gloves over top of those. Once he's completed that skill, he can doff those and then sanitize the underglove to make sure that his skin is protected while he's in the room. All right, once our um, gloves are on, we're going to put eye protection on. And so with our eye protection, we want to make sure that we have something that fully covers the side of the eye, a good wide brim on the side. Normal glasses don't qualify as a proper eye protection. We want something kind of like my safety glasses here. They're going to give us good solid eye protection or a full face shield. All right. Now, once Josh has his eye protection on, he can wear a, a bouffant or a hat. If a, a, a female or a male uh, is wearing a surgical cap or a headband, then we wanna make sure that we do include a bouffant. Um, that way the bouffant can protect the headband or the surgical cap, and it can be removed as part of the doffing process uh, when we first exit the room. So now that Josh has his boof on, his eye protection, respiratory gear, his gown, and his gloves, he is ready to enter the room. You'll notice he does not uh, have to wear booties unless your person has a, uh, another condition that would warrant you wearing booties. COVID-19 does not strictly require booties. Um, it's more dangerous to try to doff them solo than it is to not wear the, the booties and just wipe down your shoes as you exit the room. And we're gonna show you how to do that in the doffing process. All right, so now Josh is ready to enter the room. So you'll notice Josh is performing his vitals. Um, he's obtaining routine vitals in his assessment. <clears throat> he has gone to secondary pair of gloves um, to make sure that he is protected and his patient is protected. So once he has completed that assessment, he will dock those outer gloves. Now, once he's ready to exit the room, he's going to alert his spotter and let him know that he's ready to actually dock and come out of the room. Are you ready to exit? Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is have Josh take a wipe so he can use a low drying time wipe. He can use alcohol based hand rub, he can use a uh, purple top, gray top, or um, orange top which is what we have as a bleach wipe. Um, then he's going to wipe down the hand sanitizer in the room including the handle and he's also going to wipe down the door handle on the inside of the room. This is going to help him because he's going to doff his most um, contaminated gear inside the patient's room. So he will be doffing his gown and gloves. And so when he gets ready to exit the room, we want to make sure he has a clean hand sanitizer and clean door handle to be able to exit the room. All right, so while those are drying, it's going to take about two minutes for those things to dry. Um, while that's drying, he is going to doff his gown and gloves. So there's a two-step process in doffing your gown. The first thing you want to do, Josh, is pull from the front of the gown, not touching anything behind you. Pull from the front of the gown and break away the tie on the back of that gown. You want to be very careful how uh, you doff this gown. As you break away, you risk um, dispersing any particles that can come up towards the face. So you want to pull it, allow it to fall. And then the second step is you're going to grab about three inches from the neckline of the, of the gown. Um, so about three inches down, you want to grab the front of the gown and pull straight out and leave the arms extended the whole entire time that you're doffing this gown. So the first thing you want to do is take your thumb and loop the gown over top of your hands. That way all of the inside of the gown is what's facing you. 
and the outside of the gown is the piece that's dirty. So as Josh um, has tucked the gown inside out, he's gonna continue to roll it. We're doing what we call Pac-Man. So he's going to grab the gown from the top of each hand, pulling it away from him and turning it inside out at the same time. This allow, allows him to keep the inside of the gown facing him, which is the clean part. You'll notice that Josh's ties did not break on the side of his gown. So the next step he's gonna do is he's gonna control, um, have controlled movements and he's gonna grab the gown on each side and pull slowly until those ties break. Once they break, he's gonna hold it over the trash can. So the top of Josh's gown, our thumbs are covered in the gown. It's inside out, so that's the clean portion of the gown. So he's gonna take one thumb and tuck into the cuff of one of the gloves and pull that hand free. Now with his free hand, he's gonna tuck an index finger into the other cuff and pull that hand free. Once he does that, he's gonna hit the clean hand sanitizer and sanitize his hands. And then he is gonna have a clean door handle and he can exit the, the room. Now, once he comes out, even though we clean the door handle, we want to double uh, check and make sure that his hands are sanitized. So he's going to go ahead and hit the hand sanitizer outside the room. And you'll notice he steps on a chuck, also known as a docking pad. So we're going to keep him here while he's docking the rest of his PPE, just to make sure he doesn't contaminate any of the surrounding area. So once his hands are sanitized, the first thing he's going to remove is going to be his bouffant. So he's going to lean toward the trash can. He's always going to grab the back of the bouffant and pull forward. Once it clears his forehead, he's going to drop it into the trash. After each step of removing PPE, it's important that you hand sanitize. So he's going to hit the hand sanitizer again. You want to make sure that you don't um, hit the hand sanitizer more than twice. If you continually hit it and your hands are coated, if they're wet, you're, you can still transmit the virus, so you want to make sure that you rub them until they're dry. The next thing Josh is going to do is he's going to need to remove his goggles. So as his spotter, I'm going to don a pair of gloves. I'm going to hold a clean basin up. Josh is going to lean forward without touching any portion of the front of his face. He's going to grab the goggles from behind his ears, pull them forward and down, and drop them into the bucket. Now, as a spotter, I'm going to make sure that I clean these with appropriate solution, and I'm going to put them on a drying pad uh, for about 10 minutes before he's allowed to reuse those again. So, because he touched his goggles, he's going to sanitize again. Once he has that hand sanitizer rubbed in good and his hands feel dry, He's going to remove his mask, but how he removes his mask is very important. We want to make sure that he doesn't grab the front of his mask or one ear and drag it across his face because both of these can be a um, contamination risk. So he's going to use two fingers underneath his earlobes, make a V, and then pull his mask straight away from his face. This is going to keep him from con um, contaminating anything. That outer mask needs to be disposed of. He's going to hit his hand sanitizer again. And then uh, ideally, Josh would exit the docking pad and make sure to wash his hands thoroughly with soap and water <clears throat> before he removes his N95. All right, so while he's gone, the spotter would um, take up the chuck from the floor. You wanna make sure that you don't leave it there. Uh, so we wanna make sure that we fold it up Make sure you do not crumple it because we don't want to risk um, releasing any particles that may have come off. So we want to fold it up on top of itself and then make sure we throw it in the trash. The spotter is then going to doff their dirty gloves and the spotter will need to go and wash thoroughly from the elbow down with soap and water. So then our, um, our Josh has come back and uh, he's washed his hands. Make sure a key point to remember is always wash your hands before you don your N95 and always wash your hands immediately before you doff it. 
That, in addition to keeping the yellow mask on it when you're in a patient's room, is going to keep it um, clean and protected and so that you can store it in your brown paper bag to reuse again. So now that Josh's hands are clean, he's going to remove his N95. The first thing he's going to do is grab the lower strap from the bottom, pull it all the way around his head, and let it hang loose in the front. You need to be very cautious and very controlled as you remove these straps as not to displace your N95. The second thing he's going to do is go above his ears to grab the upper strap. And he's going to pull it forward, slightly tilting his head back. And as soon as the bridge of his nose is clear, he's going to pull the mask straight forward. And as his spotter, I can help him get his bag ready and he can go ahead and store that in his bag and he can use it the next time. Now that he's touched the mask, we want to make sure that he performs hand hygiene again. He can ideally use soap and water to wash from the elbow down, but in a pinch, he can use hand-based alcohol rub. Alcohol-based hand rub. 